I'm Hugo Disler from Farming Circus. I just want to have a, a brief chat about the balance between industry and the family farmer and community. Because as, as this current pandemic is, makes it very clear that uh, we really need a very strong connection between farmers and, and community. And that's, uh, it's been broken, broken to a major degree and I think the more we can concentrate on that connection between farmers and community. And the other point is this, that with this current pandemic, what we're finding is that we are financing it with taxpayers' money. We, uh, vaccines, etc., cetera, are using taxpayers' money, all sorts of things, testing everything's taxpayers' money. And we're just sending that money overseas or we're increasing our debt to our country. And as has been said a few times, a few times, a long time ago, true production is primary production. And I'd say, Ray, I just want to come up with a, a few points, if I may. I had the pleasure of, um, well, shouldn't start off with in the local paper, there's a, a, a Dr. Graham Mode, and um, he was, works with polymers in the CSIRO and he says this science sometimes takes second place to either monetary gain or popularity I think there is a reason why science get perverted basically things like climate change and pandemic that's what a, a, a doctor in, uh, in at CSIRO has to say and then on the other hand um, what um, interesting I just picked up these books because I want to refer to them. Uh, this book here was um, written by, um, by Dr. Phil Callahan. It's about how energy is transferred from the cosmos to the soil via plants or minerals. And he particularly talks about diamagnetic or paramagnetic minerals. The interesting thing was when I was reading the preface here that he gives thanks to he gives thanks to a few d different people, but gives thanks to Dr. Ard Nansen. This book was written in 1995. Um, Phil Callahan lived 100 and, uh, to 1923, and he just died recently. Phil worked out that um, everything in the world uh, was a transfer of energy, and um, plants are a part of that transfer of energy. In fact, he referred to plants as a antenna to the cosmos and the more you think about that that's exactly what they are they're transferring new uh, atmospheric um, substances gases uh, particles subatomic particles into the soil via their exudates that's the material that goes out of their roots then that exudates actually triggers off the symbiotic relationship between mycorrhiza which picks up nutrients and brings them back to the plant and industry will disrupt that mycorrhiza pattern of uh, bringing the nutrients from the soil back into the plant. So as a result, what we get is uh, what you might say, in industry interference, constantly in interfering with the way plants want to grow. And in this book here, Tuning Into Nature by, uh, by Phil Callahan, he's, he's got this to say. A sick plant actually sends forth a beacon carried in the infrared attracting insects. It is then the insect's role to dispose of this plant deemed unfit for life by nature. By learning how to tune into nature, you may learn a better understanding God's beautiful design and come to work with nature by enhancing her energies rather than attempting to overpower and rule her. So um, that still gets back to industry versus, um, well, I shouldn't say versus, um, well, it's the connection between the family farmer and community. Because, um, and as um, Fred Provenza said, he said, um, just recently said that um, the human species, the Homo sapien, is the, the most uh, destructive species that's ever hit, hit the earth or ever been on earth. Well, that is not a good legacy to be reminded of. And I, I appreciate that we do need industry. I wouldn't be in this lovely shirt, etc., and my glasses if it wasn't for industry, on it goes. But on the other hand, we, we've got to look at moderation. Why should the human species be the most destructive species on, on earth? And Dr. Arden Anderson, who recommended that uh, Phil write this book, 
He's written a couple of books. This is some time ago, Science and Agriculture, where he's spelt out a lot of things, right through to radionics, uh, uh, which is um, the energy in uh, plants. And he wrote this other book, Real Medicine, Real Health. So the, they're two classics to, to read. Now let's have a, let a bit of a chat about industry, right? When I pick up this local paper, uh, this uh, the land local paper, it sort of somewhat dismays me that on page six here, and I find it, someone, people are willing to pay $545,000 for these machines that spray poisons on, on our crops. Spraying poisons on our crops, not only do they spray weedicides, etc., they'll also spray a weedicide to desiccate a, a crop so they can uh, bring in the equipment uh, to harvest the crop. So constantly getting uh, those so-called safe parts per million of uh, poisons in our crops. Now, and then on this, later on this page here, and also they say, page 59, that 59% of the meat that is, hits the uh, market or the supermarkets is grown by feedlots. I've got my personal doubt about that because it, at the supermarket I go to that uh, I don't see a lot of grain-fed beef. But then again, maybe it's not just not labelled. The in, another good point of what I liked hearing about this thing that, um, that on page 82, right at the very back, there's this uh, farmer. He's obviously is it south of Warrigal, uh, Warrigal, Warrigal, Wagga Wagga, and he's practicing, uh, as he says, he's practicing 100% soil cover whenever he can, and that protects his um, uh, his whole farming is to do with 100% soil cover, and uh, he said he gets quicker bounce back uh, after floods or after drought um, that because he's concentrating on 100% soil cover. So um, to get 100% soil cover, I can guarantee he's not out there spraying weeds. The other interesting point too is that quite often animals are grown for certain weight gain. He makes it quite clear that irrespective of whether these animals are 500 kilos or 600 kilos, they'll find a market and it lists that they'll either go to the supermarket or uh, whatever. So it's lovely to hear, see that um, you've got moderation rather this uh, incredible uh, industrial attitude to farming. And this industrial attitude to farming is just leading us, the human race, into being a, uh, the most destructive species on, on Earth. We need more real production. And the other point here was uh, um, that uh, they're spending t money on robotics and this particular company had uh, spent um, the last two decades on uh, producing robotics for farmers. And they're quite proud about that. Well, really, we don't, robotics uh, may be good. We uh, might find it's good to have those um, drones to go and see water troughs, etc. Technology is good. I'm, um, you know, we need technology, but we need moderation and we need people back on the land. Farmers need to be paid a proper price so they can afford to employ people. And when the farmers can afford to employ people, what also happens, you get uh, a better link to communities as communities build up rather than get decimated in country towns. And the wonderful thing that has already been proven is that uh, the farmer's children want to take over the farm rather than sort of think, well, this is hard work. Uh, yeah, I don't want done with this. In my opinion, Ray, it's no longer uh, the success of a farmer. How much, how many millions of dollars he's got in his machinery shed? It's the success of a farmer is his connection to community.
All right, saw lovers. Well, that's another video from us at the Patch Farming Secrets HQ. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. We've got lots of videos like this on our Soil Learning Center. There'll be links always around the videos, but if you head over to soillearningcenter.com, that is our learning hub with years and years of videos and interviews, and even now the latest podcast, Secrets of the Soils. All the videos are loaded there for you to continually dig deeper and learn more about how our soils functions. I hope any of the videos that you watch from Farming Secrets really sparks that interest so that way you start thinking, I really want to know how the soil beneath my feet can actually heal the planet, reverse so many of the broken systems and also grow nutrient dense food. It's literally a win, 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 win for everything above the ground if we just start nurturing the stuff below the ground. So with that, I really hope that we inspiring you to really leave our soils better today than what they were yesterday. And with that, I'll let you head over to the Soil Learning Center where you can keep digging deeper and getting your hands dirty and and really understanding the wonderful world of our soil. Regen Ray for Farming Secrets. <laughs>